I'm working on the suction valve here. I made a lapping tool. I did several test fits down in there and what they did is they drilled the hole and the seat for the ball is just the drill point of the drill. 59 degrees. So that's what I cut these. 59 with this as a pilot for the hole through hole and this is the upper hole. Just um, I couldn't have it too tight because I won't be able to turn it. So this is for the suction valve and this end I made for the discharge valve down here. And so I initially blued it to see how contact and all that and it wasn't very good. So I went with some clover fine first to really rough it out and then I used various uh, from 10 micron down uh, about four steps uh, with diamond paste to lap it a bit. So uh, this is aluminum on aluminum, uh, but it seems to have worked pretty well. And I'm going to poke So I'm going to take the bore scope and go down there, take a look at it. Go down the hole here, as you can see, and see this top flat surface right here has some scratches in it, right in here and stuff. So I'm going to make a lap for that. I'm going to lap that a little bit. O-ring sits against that. And that's the seating surface of the uh, sleeve that goes in. And then it goes on down here to the bottom. Now this is where we're looking at. This is down here in the ball, where the ball seats in that little hole down there. Yeah, and that's the, that's the suction port. It comes straight up from the bottom from the reservoir. And then the other hole you see on the side there is the discharge hole. So that, I can't get too close for focus. So the, the lapping looks pretty good when you blew it, it, it's pretty consistent. I'm going to take the ball now with some with uh, some Prussian blue on it, very thin coat of Prussian blue. I'm going to drop it down in there with a magnet and try to spin it and see what kind of contact we have with the ball. Uh, I did that initially and it was about, oh, it wasn't even 50 percent hardly. So, uh, you know, you, you could get 7,000 psi on that real easy. So, we want that not to leak. So let's take the ball. Here's the ball right here. It had a little coat of blue on it. Let's lower it down there. I'm just going to lightly try to spin it. I don't know if it's spinning really, if it, it's making contact. We'll see. And we'll go back. And we're going to go back in and go down there and take a look at it. See what kind of contact we have. Well, it looks like we have. Well, it looks like we have contact pretty much all the way around. That looks uh, ten times better. Yeah. So I'm liking that. It, it, that's probably going to be enough. This is kind of a pain to do, but it's it's way better than it was. There we go. That's way better than it was. Okay. I think that that hole's done. And I'm going to do the same process on the discharge valve. Uh, we'll probably, it's in worse shape. I'm going to take the bore scope and we'll go in and look at that. So let's look in the, we're going to look in this one. Now that's a quarter inch pipe MPT on the end here that you're looking at. Now in there, now there's other ports, right? So off on the one side, uh, this yellow kind of color, that's the base of the pressure gauge. The hole on the other side is the relieving valve, you know, to bleed, your bleed pressure valve on that side and then farther down in there 
So this is the discharge port, but on the side, you, it's hard to see it. Aside of that is the relief valve. So, I don't know if you can, you can't quite see the port for the relief valve, but it's on the, actually it's on the bottom of this picture. So let's back up here. See how rough it looks in there? It looks like the drill chattered down in there and that very center part where the ball seats is horrible looking. See, it's not concentric or anything. It's got a big spot on the side and everything. So we're going to see what we can do about fixing that now. Let me pull that out. Anyway, so another good use of the bore scope. Works fantastic. <laughs> Uh, I have a hard time looking down in there even with a flashlight and everything. So that, that really is really being helpful. So we'll, we'll go back to work and we'll start on that with, uh, I might, I think I'm going to start off with a coarse uh, clover first and then go to the fine and then go to the diamond. We'll work our way down. So it doesn't take much, just the tiniest bit. I just dab a little bit on there. Just hardly anything there's hardly anything on there and then in the hole here yeah this is almost impossible to film this but all I can do is I mean this this so this hole they drilled it, um, but they didn't get it perfectly straight and concentric. <laughs> so this was kind of a pain to get something to fit down in there and not have too much wiggle. I mean, I have a little bit, but I just have to push it and, and work it. It's, this might take me a little while to uh, and then lift it off. Lift it off, lift it off, yeah, and I'll keep doing this and I'll clean it and I'll put some more st grinding compound on it and this, this is the best I can do I think. Uh, I really should have, should set this all up and try to mill it but it's too tall or, or It'd be very difficult to get this uh, kind of lined up. I would have been better off making a whole new pump body. <laughs> the suction and discharge valve and the relief valve are the three main valves that have to work. If they leak, yeah, you'll never get it, never get the pump to work, or at least work right if the, if they leak. I'm going to be able to get 7,000 pounds out of this thing. Uh, that's my goal. All right, we've, I had to build a rig here to uh, hold it vertical. And we're going to take a look at how I did here. So uh, we'll go in here, take a look. And that looks pretty good. It looks pretty much 100% on the seat there, right, right there at the opening. So uh, we got blue all the way around. Looks pretty good. That's this valve is so important. Like I said, between the suction, this the discharge valve here, and the relief valve. Three of the most important ones. We'll also do this to the relief. Yep. Looks pretty good. So we'll call that one good.
I have the pump all cleaned out. Things are lapped, and I'm uh, I cleaned it out with the WD-40 and Q-tips and all that good stuff. I'm gonna start with the relief valve. That's here on the bottom. Thought I'd do a real quick explanation of how this pump works. This works like most other hydraulic jacks. So over here we have a reservoir. This big square is a cutaway of the pump. Full liquid right in here. So liquid is in here and in here just sitting there you know, all the time. When you, when you pull the, the black lines here, that's the plunger. When you pull it up, this, these, this is a ball right here. The ball will lift and draw fluid into the pump cavity. You'll push down on the pump. The ball will seat here. The fluid will get pushed out here. So now we have fluid, right? And now fluid will get pumped, pushed out here. This is the discharge valve with a spring behind it. It will push the ball back and flow around this and go to the jacks. It will flow on out to the jacks. When you stop pushing, on that pump, this spring will push that valve closed. And if you go to draw up again, it will help draw the valve closed. The pressure out here will push that valve tight. And that's what holds your pressure in your jack and uh, not to be released. Now down here, we have a relief valve also, right? So if the pressure when you're pumping it is too high, that should be a little port right there the pressure gets too high in this line this ball will push down against the spring here and relieve right back to the reservoir so this is a screw you can adjust that so how much pressure it takes to push that ball open right and bleeds back then on the side we have our valve to relieve the pressure in your cylinders so the valve is right here it's it's straight in on the side when you open that, it relieves on back all the way to the reservoir. It has its own, own port here that's drilled in here through these dotted lines. And it, it, it just dumps the pressure right here, right on back into the reservoir. Pretty simple, pretty simple. But since we're dealing, we're dealing with some pretty high pressures, uh, so it's so critical that these balls, all, all of them, all three of these balls seat really well. They, they can't leak. If it, just the smallest a leak will, would make the difference between 4,000 pounds and 7,000 pounds. Uh, or 1,000 pounds and, and 7,000 uh, pounds. I could barely, I was barely able to lift the, the table we're on, which is 750 pounds, on one end even, not even the whole table. I was barely able to get it off the ground. So we, we hardly had any pressure at all to push those jacks up. Now, these are small ports. These are only 156 thousandths holes. These are very small ports. Uh, you know, so, and the plunger here is, uh, I think, 5 eighths or roughly. So, uh, you know, this, this is not a real big piston, but the jacks are, are three inch pistons, uh, I'm pretty sure, three inch. So if you want to figure it out, uh, you got 7,000 PSI pushing here, let's say at the max. I worked out the math for you, if you're interested. Uh, so if we could develop 7,000 pounds inside the jack, the pistons are, I think, uh, three inches, so, Pi r squared for the area, 3.14 pi, okay? So pi times 1.5 times 1.5, the radius of the piston, gives me 7.07 .07 square inches, times 7,000 PSI, that's 49,480 pounds, and then times two, it's two jacks together, so it's 9,896 pounds that I can push, divided by 2,000 yeah, for tons, and that comes out to 49 and a half tons uh, we should be able to lift theory theoretically with the two jacks oh that's a quick brief explanation of how this works and uh, why it works 
So we that's why the ball thing was so uh, critical uh, to get right. So let's finish putting the jack together and hook it up and put some oil in it. Give it a test. Relief valve is made up the ball. There's a, a follower and then a spring and then the set screw. Now this is the follower part right here. It's really small. And I'll try to show you what this is not like hardened or anything and it was flat on the end and the ball made a divot off to one side. It's not even in the middle. I mean that could have been causing some problems because it won't push on the ball straight. So I made a new one right here and I put a center divot in it so the ball has a place to go and I harden this. So this is running right around at Rockwell 60. It's it's glass hard all really and uh, I didn't temper it. I made it out of W1 and it's nice and hard. So we're going to be using this one in there. So ball goes first. So this is a really short spring. Uh, very little room for compression. Very very stout. Looks like they just took a stout spring and cut it off. And then this is a set screw that he got in there. Now this is just straight threads. I'm going to use a Loctite 545 thread sealant. It's for hydraulics and such. We'll, um, we'll see how this uh, does. Straight threads are hard to seal, but the only time there should be oil on it or pressure on it is if the rel relief valve opens. I backed off about a half a turn. That's a half a turn from like full, feels like full compression. So <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll just leave it there. Now on the side here, we're going to put the valve in. This is your bleed off valve right here. Uh, it's a pretty simple deal. This is eighth inch pipe on here. And then this has a, this is threaded in and it has an O-ring in here. I've already replaced the O-ring in there. Now on this, there's just a ball. This is a brand new ball, quarter inch ball. And that just presses on here on the stem of this. I'll put some sealant on there. Has nothing to grab that with. And I probably should put two flats on it, but I'm just gonna use a pair of channel locks on there. Now, this just holds a, bo a ball in the seat, and we'll just snug it up. The only time that thread sees pr any kind of pressure is when you bleed off, and then it goes right back to the tank. So uh, it's pretty, pretty simple. So there's not a lot of pressure on those threads. Now, the discharge valve over on the end here, we'll put that in when I put the hose back on, because the whole hose holds it in place with a spring. Kind of cleaned up the gauge. Uh, you can read it now. Uh, whether how accurate it is, I, I don't know, but it's uh, it's going to go back in there. It doesn't leak. Let me put it that way. So, and it does function, and it looks okay inside. I've worked on a lot of gauges, but I don't have any way to calibrate this one, so uh, it's just going to have to go back in. It's kind of in a tough spot here inside this guard. Handle looks a little bent over the years. Guard looks a little bent. I'm sure it's had some tough treatment. Be in the industries it in. It's down in here. This is kind of tough shape. Get it to stay in. We'll have to get a new gauge. We'll have to order one up. Now this has a brand new ball. Also, this is a little kit, uh, seal kit. Make sure that's cleaned out. Perfect. And we're just going to drop our ball in there. Now there's no spring against that or anything. It just floats up underneath the, the piston. Then underneath the cylinder, the sleeve cylinder, 
that we were going to be screwing in there that will have the piston already in it when we put it in has a nylon seat that this goes against. I'm going to drop that down in there. Okay, this is the piston. Uh, this is going to be hard to show, but this has a nylon backing ring here. This is an O-ring. And this is the seal, the bottom seal, and it has a nylon ring also. And we need to, we'll have to get this all off of here. And it has an O-ring that's kind of like, that's inside the seal. All right, so here's the piston. And here's all the parts that are kind of associated with this. Now, this, this is a, at the top end here where the, the gland nut is on top. This goes in the gland nut. It's a wiper ring to keep dirt, dirt out, of the, out of the piston. Then there's a, this one it goes, is below it inside the top of the sleeve. This is a guide ring to keep the piston straight and acts kind of like a packing in a way, but it's, it's more of a guide ring. You shouldn't have oil pressure up here. Then down here we have we have a nylon or split ring, which is oops, which is right here, this one. Then an O-ring, O-ring. Then in between here is a guide ring right here, a little thin split guide ring right there. And then we have, now this helps keep the piston centered in the bore. Then we have this nylon backing ring here, and then we have the seal here. And this has, like, like I said, it has an O-ring like in the seal. Uh, it helps expand this out is what it does right there. And this is not, this is kind of flared out. Now this, these seals are good to 600 bar, you know, 7,000 pounds. So that's what we should be able, we should be able to get that out of this pump. And uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna get all these off and put them all on. Now the the old guide ring uh, came off in pieces. It was it had gotten jammed and worn out and just not any good anymore. I'm gonna get some hot water and soak this in hot water to warm it up to help stretch this out. It, the these need a little bit of warming up. I just uh, boiled some water, so we're just gonna warm this up. It should be able to stretch it out. Okay, out of the water, nice and warm. Uh, see how see how easy that stretches. Pops right off. Yeah, a little warm water and things come off real easy that way. We'll just warm that up when we go to put it on. Same with the nylon ring. We'll just warm those up when we slip them on. I just polished this up with some Scotch Bright real light. To make sure there were no burrs or anything on there. Now these edges are pretty sharp because. They need to be. They, you're running some close tolerances. This here, I think, will just will just pop right on. We'll just slip that on there. Now I'm going to warm. I'm going to warm this one up. Well, it went over 99% of the way. It's uh, still not slipped underneath the shoulder yet. This this ring sits up on a shoulder on inside here, and that's all tight. I'll just have to uh, work this around. It's going here. I'm just going to work it around my fingernail. All right, I'm, fingernail wasn't enough. I got have something a little stouter and it's popping right underneath the edge there just pressing it down there we go it 
The other ones we're going to slip on from the other end. Now I'm using a, I'm going to use Dow Corning number four. It's a, they call it electrical insulating compound, but it's a silicone grease, and this stuff works awesome for O-rings. We use it on airplanes all the time. It uh, really works good as an O-ring lube. And then this ring is um, split, but that will just slip right on there. Go down, it's a backing ring. Perfect. And this is split also, and that just slips around here and goes on there. The guide ring. So there, there's the seal set up. Looks pretty good. No nicks or dings. And we'll use those on the top in the sleeve. All right, now the sleeve is uh, nice and clean, and I'm going to take some of the lube here, some of the, we call it DC4, and uh, just kind of smear it in here. So we have some lube uh, up in there, and we're going to wipe this down pretty good. And that goes right in there. Right. Hopefully I can push this together. I'm hoping I can just push this together in my hands. There, that's one. That's two. There we go. Boy, that's a snug fit, huh? Now this guide ring goes on here and it slips down in here now. Hmm. I was wondering about that. How tight that's gonna be. So that fits really tight there and down in here. So the old uh, upper guide ring here measures it uh, 52 thousandths roughly. This one measures it 60 thousandths. So that's not going to go in. But it's just it's just a guide ring. So let's see. We're going to try this one. The old one. Yeah, that goes in real real nice. So guess what? We're going to be using that old one. I'll make a note about that. Maybe I could uh maybe I could work at making a, a new one out of Delrin or something. I mean this is this, all this is probably a Delrin type material, that sort of thing. Then the uh seal wiper here just uh drops in here. Now the wiper edge the, the edge goes up um to wipe out to stop the dirt. Kind of barfed up, but uh, I might I might make him a new one of those. It's kind of barfed. Anyway, that screws down. Just holds that all in. It's ready to install. All right, I coated that up with uh, NICs. Now, there's two things in the world you don't want to put together: stainless on stainless and aluminum on aluminum. Aluminum threads in aluminum threads. I tell you, can be the worst combination ever. A little bit of corrosion in there, and like if you introduced a little salt water or anything to cause any kind of corrosion in there, this will weld in. It will never come out. So something on there to try to stop it. So anti-seize is all I have, and that's what we're going to use. Now, I already dropped the seal in there, the nylon, it's just a nylon ring, and I'm going to drop the ball in there, and that's our suction valve, and that's it. All 
Oh, it's smooth. Sure goes in nice and smooth. That's good. Now, I'm going to have to take this gland nut off, though. Shoot. That gland nut's got to come off. Why? Because I'm going to have to use my nuts to install this thing. I'll take that out of the way. My two nuts. Hope they'll... Now I'm going to leave this off the bottom a little bit so I can crush it down, hopefully. Now hopefully those are tight enough for us to seat that. I have a little gap here, about 50 thousandths. seal ring back on or wiper nut now down here's the, the discharge port a little brand new ball and then there's a spring that goes in there Now they size that spring so it stops right inside about a half an inch inside this uh, fitting. So that will compress this uh, spring. Kind of pain, I gotta turn the whole hose here. This is a filtering funnel here, filter screen. Pretty fine. It'll take a little few minutes of Put this in. All right, now things full of air. Uh, so we're going to sit here and bleed this back to itself um, and get the suck. There's a suction hose that goes down this tank. And we need to bleed all the air out of this uh, before we hook it up to jacks. We want to make sure we don't have any air. So we're just going to open this and sit here and pumpy, pumpy, pump. Just pump, pump, pump. Well, that's 2,500 PSI right there. Just me doing that. Plus, I can go a little farther even. So. I'll have to probably put it on the ground and I'll press on it and I'll see where the relief valve lifts. It's probably set too light. Oh, there I can feel it. Just past 2,500 a little bit. There I get it. I turned it about a quarter turn and About 4,000. Another eighth of a turn. 5,000. About 6,000. See that was five, about six. I think each mark's five hundred. So yeah, five hundred. So 
that 6,500. So that's uh, pretty good. And now I have it pumped. I pumped it up to 7,500 PSI and it's linked down 500 pounds, but it's taken a few minutes to get there. So my suction or dis so my discharge valve is now working, seems to be holding. So that's what it should do. It should hold that pressure. Yep. I can get 75 P 100 PSI. So, uh, and uh, that's a good deal. I'm going to bleed this and I'm going to hook it up to the jacks. Things are working, still going up, probably getting pretty close to the end. That's it. Sweet. I'll bleed them off. This will help get any air out of there too. I'll have to cyclone a few times just to make sure. Caveman Faller is going to be happy. Sweet. This is how critical those valves are. That's the slightest leak. Good test. No, I just, I just, I just set on those little trays and uh, get strapped down. You can put this on your back, that little backpack like straps. I think this strap's barely long enough here, but works. There we go. Now it's got this carrying handle. And this hose. I probably should try to get under there, but maybe a little snug. I'll just wrap it around, I think. There we go. Pretty compact package. Uh, it's not light <laughs> by any means. Uh, you know, it's all aluminum, but it's, it's not light. It probably weighs, oh gosh, 30, 40 pounds. <laughs> but, you know, Pretty nice unit, 50 ton jacks of jacking power there. So, sweet deal. Caveman Follower is going to love this thing, I think, now that it works. And uh, we'll just uh, keep it running for him. So, uh, thanks you guys. Hope you enjoyed the uh, repair of this and kind of overhaul. And uh, 
you know, subscribe, please subscribe. And uh, we'll be able to do more content like this, support the channel, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next one.